In topic 1.5, we're learning about our 3D shapes. Some of the 3D shapes are known as polyhedrons. Polyhedrons um, are the shapes that have straight edges, just like our polygons had straight edges. So they're divided into two categories. You have your prisms, which have flat edges, and your pyramids, which have one pointy um, side. So they can either be a prism or a pyramid. Examples of shapes that are not polyhedrons are the ones that are circular or round, like your cylinders, your cones, and your spheres. Here we have a list of different polyhedrons, and we're going to practice um, looking at their bases and determining if it's a polyhedron or not, and giving it a name. Again, when you're doing your assignment, you're welcome to look at the notes to look up these names if you don't have them memorized. So first, we're going to determine whether or not it is a poly polyhedron, and then we're going to name the solid or identify what it is called. So our first picture here, since it has flat bases, it is a polyhedron, so I'm going to put yes. And then the name for this, if you look at the bases, they're rectangles. So since they're rectangles, this is rectangular. And it's called a rectangular prism. And you can see that up here in the notes as well. Remember, your prisms have flat edges. So if you look here at the left side, these are our prisms. If you look at the right side, these are our pyramids where they have one um, pointy side. Part B has round um, bases. So since they're round, it is not a polyhedron. This one is actually a cylinder. And remember, you can look these up in the notes if you need to. Our names are there on top. We have cylinders, cones, and spheres. Our last shape here does have flat bases. So since it has flat bases, it is a polyhedron. So I'm going to say yes. And you'll notice it's pointy. If it's pointy, then it's a pyramid. And since our base here is a triangle, it's a triangular pyramid. Again, you can look this up in your um, notes if you need to. I don't expect you to memorize the names in one day. But if they're flat, then it's a prism. If it's pointy, it's a pyramid. If it has round sides or edges, it could either be a cylinder, a cone, or a sphere. Next, we're going to talk about how to find surface area and volume for these shapes. Now here, these are a lot of formulas. I don't expect you to memorize them. Again, you should be looking up the formulas in your notebook pages as you're doing your assignment. Now what surface area means is they're taking the area of all the edges, all the bases, and adding them together. Um, so again, surface area, they give you formulas, but really what those formulas are doing are they're taking the areas of every single edge or face and adding them together. So like on our rectangular prism here, what they're doing for surface area is they're finding the area of the top, the bottom, and all the sides going around and adding them together, and that gives the total surface area. Volume is for 3D shapes, like length times width times height normally, but not all of these have necessarily the same length with height. So there's different formulas that we use for volume when we're doing our 3D shapes. So again, here's your formulas. S stands for surface area, V stands for volume. Um, in these formulas, if you see the letter um, H, that stands for your height. P stands for perimeter of the base. A big B stands for the area of the base. A little L stands for the slant height. Slant height means instead of your height going up and down, it's your slanted height. So like if you look at your cone here, your slant height is the height that goes slanted. Your regular height is the one that goes up and down. And then remember R stands for radius. So when we use these formulas, we'll practice uh, checking what those names mean. So on this section, we're going to be finding surface area and volume for each solid. 
We'll start with the surface areas, then we'll do the volumes. So let's start with the surface area of this cylinder. So I'm going to look up the formula for surface area. It's right here. And let me copy that down. So my surface area is equal to 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Remember for pi, we're going to use 3.14. R stands for radius, so our radius here is 6 feet. Then H stands for height. Our height of this cylinder is 18 feet. Once you've identified all your um, variables, then you can plug them into the formula. So here I have 2 times 3.14 times 6, my height is 18 plus 2 times 3.14 times 6 squared. So from here, we're going to evaluate. You can use a calculator if you need to. So I'm going to start by multiplying all these numbers together. 2 times 3.14 times 6 times 18 gives me 678.24. On this next part, I have to do my exponents first. So 6 squared or 6 times 6 is 36. Now I can multiply 2 times 3.14 times 36. That gives me 226.08. And I'm going to add that to the 678.24. This will give me 904.32. Our question wants us to answer to the nearest tenth. So this one would be 904.3. And remember to include units in your answer. Here the units are feet, and since S stands for surface area, remember with area your units are squared, so it's feet squared. Now we're going to find the volume for our cylinder. So let's look up the formula for volume. It's right here, and it's volume equals pi r squared times the height. Really what they're doing is they're taking the area of the circle and multiplying it times the height to get their volume. So here we're going to plug in 3.14 for pi. Remember our radius was 6 feet and our height was 18 feet. 6 squared is 36. So now I can multiply 3.14 times 36 times 18. That comes out to 2034.72. If I want one decimal place, I'm going to use 2034.7. And my units here, again, are feet. But when you're doing volume, your units are cubed. So it would be cubic feet. Our next image here is a rectangular prism. So we're going to find the surface area of our rectangular prism. So I'm going to find the formula for surface area from my formula chart, and that is pH plus 2B. P stands for perimeter of the base. So I'm going to have to look at my base here and find the perimeter. So this side's 10, that side's 10, this side will be 5.2. So my perimeter, remember, you're just adding up all your sides. If we add these together, we get 30.4 centimeters for our perimeter of the base. The formula also has the letter H. H stands for height. Here our height is 6 centimeters. And then it also has the letter B. The letter B stands for area of the base. So my area of the base, I would do length times width. So I would do 5.2 times 10, which will give me 52 centimeters squared, because it's area. 
Now that I know all of these numbers, I can plug them into the formula. So for P, we got 30.4. Our height was 6. And our area of the base was 52. So I'm going to do 30.4 times 6. That gives me 182.4. And 2 times 52 is 104. If you add those together, you get 286.4, which is already to the nearest tenth. And since surface area is area, our units are centimeters squared. Next, we're going to find the volume for our rectangular prism. The formula for volume is the area of the base times the height. So BH, and we'll write that down here. We already know the area of the base is 52, because we found that earlier. And our height was 6. So if we do 52 times 6, we get 312 for our volume. And volume is centimeters cubed. So make sure to put that cubed sign there. Now, if we look at our last shape, um, it's a cone. So we're going to be starting by finding the surface area of the cone. The formula is pi r l plus pi r squared. So we need to identify pi. Remember for pi we use 3.14. R stands for the radius. The radius in this picture is 15 inches. L stands for something called the slant height. Your slant height is the height that goes sideways or slanted. So here that would be the 17 inches. And then um, they didn't ask for this yet, but the regular height here in this picture going up and down would be 8 inches. So we're going to use what we know and plug into our formula. So I'm going to plug in 3.14 for pi, 15 for r, 17 for l, and then we'll add 3.14 for pi, and then our r was 15 squared. So now I'm going to start to simplify. I'm going to start by multiplying 3.14 times 15 times 17, which gives me 800.7. If I do on the next one, I need to do 15 squared first. So 15 squared is 225. And then I can multiply that times the 3.14. That gives me 706.5, and I can add the 800.7. So I get 1,507.2, and my units here are inches. Since surface area is area, it's inches squared. Next, we're going to find our volume for our cone. So we look up the formula for volume. It's one-third pi r squared times the height. So I have one-third. For pi, I'm going to plug in 3.14. My radius was 15 inches. And my height, again, was the 8 inches because that's how it went up and down. I have to square first, so 15 squared is 225. And now I can start working out my problem. So one third means you're dividing by three. So I'm gonna start by doing three. I'll do that last actually. So let's do the this part. 3.14 times 225 times eight. That gives me 5,652. And then times one third means we're dividing by three. So that comes out to 1,884. For my volume, and remember volume is cubic. So instead of inches squared, we do inches cubed. So while you're doing um, your 1, 5, you're, you, these are a lot of formulas. You're just plugging in and evaluating, which is nothing new. It's just you have to look at your figure and then find the correct formulas for it. So up here, um, you'll look at your notes for your formula chart. 
Remember though, P stands for perimeter of the base. Big B stands for your area of your base. L stands for your slant height, which is the height that goes to the side. And R stands for your radius of a circle.